Hi folks, welcome to Around the Town Revisited. Yes, we have actually gone back and taken some of our old shows and dusted them off and we're ready to show them again. Uh, I'm very excited about doing this series of, of programs because there's a lot of people who are new to Armstrong who have never had the opportunity to see these shows and many of these shows aren't on YouTube. So this is going to be a great opportunity for folks to revisit them and to get to experience them the first time. So today I am going to get rescued. Uh, a little bit fun background about this show is I was actually approached by one of the members of the Bullskin Township Volunteer Fire Department who stopped me and said, hey, you know, I really enjoy the show. Uh, have you ever considered doing a mock accident? And I hadn't. And as soon as he had said, you know, suggested it, I loved the idea. And I take my hat off to the Bullskin Township Volunteer Fire Department because they set everything up. They went and they got the vehicle that you will be seeing. Um, they got all of their equipment together. And about a dozen of them, if not more, volunteered their afternoon to make this show possible. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, now to begin our very special show today, I have with me Kyle Quinn, who is the first assistant chief. Correct. And I also have with me Brad Jalot, who is the president and safety officer. Is yes. that correct? Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the show. We're very, very, very proud to have you with us today. And so let's start at the beginning with the equipment. What do we have that we're going to be using at our accident scene? Okay. First off, we're going to be using the cribbing. What we do with this is stabilize the vehicle. We don't want any movement in the vehicle while the patient's in there due to the fact we don't know what kind of injuries they okay. have. Okay, so stabilization so, is first, yeah. okay. Really all it is is four by fours, you know, two, two by sixes and some wedges that we can crib up and stabilize the vehicle to keep it from moving. Okay, and they're all different sizes I yes. see, so it yes. all depends. Everything's okay. different sizes. All right. So if we go back to the next compartment, this is just some quick response stuff from hammers to chisels to even lawnmower blades that we could use to, to cut a vehicle apart with. Okay. Uh, airbags that may be needed if somebody's pinned underneath. We use air bottle system to actually lift the vehicle up. It's oh. an airbag, it'll lift, lift. Uh, I'm not sure the weight capacities, each bag's different depending okay. on the size. So we can go back to the... Uh, Zoom back. This is the hydraulic equipment we're gonna be using, known as the Draws of Life. These the are Draws our, of Life, okay. Yes, these are the hydraulic rams that we can use. They actually extend out to pry pry the dash apart, pry the doors, anything. O cutters, that's used for cutting the metal, not spreading it, it actually just cuts, okay. it will pierce it. Now you, uh, we said there's a lot of different little things here, uh, different sizes, so there's no such thing as like an, an average accident. I mean, you don't know what you're going to, you don't know what to expect until you get there, Each so you're prepared for yeah, anything. Correct. Each accident is completely different. Every scenario is completely different. The key every time whenever we have a fire call is if we have one of our line officers get there first and do a scene size up. That way we have an idea of what we're getting into. He can report back to the guys oh, on the okay. way to the call that we have this type of vehicle, this person's entrapped, or what we're going to need to do as soon as we get there, and we can just start pulling and have a general idea of what we have to do whenever we get there. So naturally then speed, speed is the essence as far as being Correct. able to tell what you're dealing with. There's always the golden hour. Oh, really? Yes. And what is that? That's that's your that's your time frame of getting somebody out and getting them to the hospital. Okay. All right. Now, do you want to step over and talk about some of these items over here? These are Tom Kendall, our rescue captain, is right right here. You can uh, go through some of that also. You, Tom? How are you? Hi. You. <laughs> I guess you've been volunteered. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, I'm used to it. Okay, you want to tell us a little bit, Tom, what's going to be going on here? What now? What is what is this contraption? Uh, this is our O cutters. This is what we use to cut the post. They're called an A post, B post, C post. Uh, we cut those off to remove the the roof. Okay. Our uh, spreaders there. That's what we use. What uh, a lot of people refer to as the jaws of life. Oh, okay. Uh, that's what we use to uh, pop doors and uh, get things get people out like that. Now, something I really do want to point out to people is Brad's holding this like it's nothing. This weighs about, what, 50, 60 pounds? Or I mean, it's pretty heavy. You guys had yeah, me lift it up before. This is Amcus. Some uh, companies have Hearst. Hearst are uh, a lot heavier. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. so. <laughs> but uh, we went with the Amcus system. And with this one also, we, ha we have slip knots that we can uh, change out the, the, okay. 
the heads on these and these actually come oh, we can change okay we can change, change them around if we have to lift the vehicle real quick or do something in a but in these a are heavy though oh yeah my, and my point I, what i think is amazing is a lot of times whenever you do see something because when you see it in the movies or television it's just so much different than what you're going to see today but they pretty much fling them around like they don't weigh anything and they really do it's it's amazing how quickly these these folks can use these and and apply them to you where they it? have to sure <laughs> let me try i'll hold this i know it's <laughs> This, oh, this is heavy. You can let go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is, now that's heavy. Just wait a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, before we actually go in and start our mock accident, we're going to talk a little bit with these two gentlemen who are graciously joining us today from Fayette EMS to volunteer their time as well. And we have Trey and we have Josh. And, okay, now, uh, again, I, I will repeat, there's no such thing as an average accident. Okay, when you arrive at a scene, what do you do? Do you do an immediate assessment, or what do you do when you get there? Well, the first thing when we arrive, we do a quick scene assessment, make sure everything's safe to go into. Um, we get into a lot of stuff. We see a lot of stuff. Like you said, there's no action the same. Uh, we go over hillsides, we go into ditches, we go into cars, into trees, everything. Um, so what you want to do is make sure everything's safe first. Then that's when you start uh, assessing your patient. You want to see... You know, are they still conscious? Are they still with it? Can they remember anything? What happened? That's kind of like like a crime scene investigator. Oh, okay. Kind of figure everything out, put the pieces together. Okay. So, so then, uh, one, okay, now once you get them, say, out of the vehicle then, what do you do from there? Um, it all depends on the type of injuries that they okay. have. I mean, if they're having broken bones, you're going to splint them. Obviously, um, any person that's in an accident, we have them on a backboard with a uh, collar to support their spine and neck. There's obviously injuries we can't okay. see a lot of so the time. So you do do that. That's like a gimme. Yes, that's okay. a gimme. All right. Um, then, uh, depending on, you know, how they are, if they're awake, alert, and oriented, you know, they can answer all the questions for us. Um, you know, it depends on who can take them in. I'm, you know, the difference between a paramedic and an EMT. Um, I use, I can put them on a heart monitor, start an IVs on them. I mean, oh, okay. there's a lot of different things that I could be doing for them <clears throat> when we're transporting the hospital. And then we also determine, depending on the severity of their injuries, whether we're going to go to a local hospital or if we're going to put them in a helicopter and send them down uh, down okay. to a trauma center. So you make that determination when you're en route, then? No, usually no, we do it right there on, on the, the scene. scene. Yep. Right at the scene. Yep. Okay. Because then we'll have to set a helicopter up somewhere to put them down on the ground and have the fire department actually with us with that to okay. put them in a helicopter and send them down so then to what we center. have in the back of one of these is like a pretty self-contained i mean it, there's pretty much a mobile emergency room really yep we have a heart monitor we have all set up to do ivs and everything um we can actually um actually breathe for somebody we can intubate them which is sticking a plastic tube down their throat to breathe for them um we can do all the splitting and everything if they have any broken like extremities arms legs anything like that to support to support that injury um and then obviously like i said with the uh, mobilization with the back and everything on it okay wonderful okay gentlemen well i'm going in uh, i guess i'll see you whenever you're putting me on that That's okay right. thanks guys Thank you. okay all the guys we have are our vehicle rescue technician training it's a 48 hour class each one of them has to take to be able to even do rescue work on a vehicle what he's doing now is gaining access to the patient so that ems can get in there and determine what kind of injury she has while we, we start the extrication process. He has a neck collar right now he's going to put on her in case she has any type of cervical injuries. They're also going to cover her up with a, a blanket. That way if any glass or any, any pieces of metal were happen to fly, it's going to protect her as best we can. Other guys are working on the cribbing. They're going to crib it up, and then they'll actually pull the valve stems out so that the car will actually sit on top of the cribbing. Because what you don't want is a lot of movement just in case she has some type of uh, spinal, spinal injury that could, that could shift. So we want to keep her as, uh, as stable as possible. Most of the guys, whenever, whenever they're going to, to the call, the line officer gets on scene and advises them of what we need and what we have. Our captains will, will let the rest of the guys know what they need to do when they get there. That way we have some type of a game plan prior to even arriving on scene. Right now they're working on cutting the seat belt off so that they can, they can get ready for extricating her once we get the door and the roof off. Cutting the battery terminals off is an important thing. 
you don't want any sparks. Obviously, it was in a, in a uh, high-speed collision. There's probably going to be gasoline, oil, all kind of combustible materials. That's what the hand line's for on the other side of the vehicle. That's for patient safety and our safety for our guys as well. That's what the safety officers are constantly going around the vehicle, making sure that, uh, that he doesn't see any safety issues. Our captain, too, is cutting the windshield out. We have a windshield saw. It's just a saw. It does not break like the side windows. It does not shatter. It has a thin plastic layer inside of it to keep it from shattering. So it's a little bit more difficult to get out. That's why we have to use a saw on it. If you're ever in a vehicle accident, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to keep calm, but that is the best thing that helps us out. It doesn't get our guys excited. Try to remain calm. You're gonna hear all kinds of noises. It's very loud. Once these hydraulic tools start working, it's gonna be very loud. And it, it, it would be a very, uh, a very scary situation, but the best thing for you to do is to stay calm during the whole process. These guys are trained to do do what they're doing safe and protect you. So, once they get the windshield removed, they can start start taking the roof off. They'll start at the A post, A post being at the front of the vehicle, and it goes in alphabetical order, A, B, C, toward the back. <clears throat> Once that windshield's opened up, you can see it comes off as relatively one big piece because of that plastic layer in between the glass. Right now what he's doing is trying to pinch it. As you can see in between, in between the fender and the door, it spreads apart. We need enough access point in order to get the tips of the spreaders in. So he's squeezing it there to draw it, to draw it open enough to get the, to get the tool in. A lot of times we'll do that. We can use the Halligan bar, which Tom has back there, to get a purchase point. Right now I don't know if you can see real well. They're gonna start start spreading the door open. Okay, as you get in here and see, you can see that they're trying, you need to get the purchase point. See how he has the purchase point there to get them in and he'll just keep working it little by little. Those tools exert an extreme amount of force Once he gets it opened up a little bit, he can keep going in and, and get it to pop open. So you can see once it starts to go, it goes rather quick. That's how noisy, I mean, you're inside a vehicle, I'm, you know, it's, it's not gonna be a pleasant experience, but it's, it's something that has to happen. It's gonna be a little bit loud. While they're working on the hinge side, they're trying to get the pin side opened. That's where the latch is. It actually latches around a pin. He's trying to pop that side right now. Once it pops off, the door will be done. As you can see, this is it's it's physical. It's a very physical job these guys are going through. It's a it's a heavy tool. You're trying to hold it in an awkward position. While this is all going on, the the paramedic in the back is actually he's actually assessing the patient while we're doing all this, so that he we they will be ready whether they need to call a helicopter in or if it's just going to be a local hospital ground transport. He's assessing all that while we're, we're going through this process. So there's a lot going on at, at one time. You, 
you can just see the amount of force. Another thing you can take notice of is the vehicle, all that pressure going on it, it it's really not moving at all with the, the cribbing underneath of it. It's actually sitting sit solid. Right now, our other captain, he is going to start start out taking the B post off and we're going to start removing the roof. I hope you are enjoying the show so far. Uh, I wanted to point out that I felt completely comfortable and at ease with these professionals, that every single one of them knew exactly what they were doing. They treated me with, with such care and, and concern. And it really, really made me even more appreciative of the first responders who I've always, they've, I've, I've always been one of their biggest fans. I think they're the, the biggest heroes out there. But these young ladies and, and young men who, who gave up their afternoon to volunteer and, and bring this show to you were very, very impressive from beginning to end. And as they kept telling me to, to remain calm, I think that's really a good message out there for all of us to really, really think about because you know it couldn't be a matter of life or death the way that you respond to how you're being treated. And the EMTs were there, which is uh, something we really didn't expect. We were very pleasantly surprised that they also got to be a part of the show because we thought we were just going to do the accident, but we actually go, got to go from the accident to the ambulance, and then they treated me in there as well. So that was a great, great plus that we weren't expecting, and I think it really added to the show. So speaking of which, enjoy the rest. And we've slowed this down a lot for the guys so that uh, you can get a better idea. Otherwise, we would have been, somebody would have been cutting the door off and we'd have had somebody cutting with the O cutters also. So there'd have been a lot of things going on at the same time where we've slowed it down so that you can get a better understanding of how everything works. He'll cut the B post completely off. That gains access to the patient even more. Technically, right now, we could probably extricate her and take her out with just having that post off. That just opens the entire side of the vehicle up to where we can, we have a lot of room to work. They're actually gonna flap the roof also. The more room that you can have to, to the patient inside, to, the more, the more we can make sure that she gets out of there without moving her around. Back here on the seat post, they're going to continue that cut with the saws all. can see they're going to have to continue to hold up on that side because it's structurally not going to support the roof now. As you can see, Josh is still inside holding, making sure her neck stays stabilized and doesn't move. That's the most important thing is patient care while we're going through all this. <coughs> now we're going to start extricating her out of there. We'll backboard her, put her on the stretcher.
what we don't want her to do is try to move on her own. We want to try to, to just let her sit relaxed and let the guys do all the work to get her out. They'll slide the backboard under between her and the seat and try to just rotate her back on a backboard and slide her up so that we do very little movement. <clears throat> we work really well with our EMS providers in the area. They, they're, most of them are actually trained firefighters and rescue technicians also, not just paramedics and EMTs. As you can see, in one solid motion, they slide her right up. They'll fasten her down to the board and then put her on the stretcher. <clears throat> the biggest thing for anybody that's involved in an accident is to just stay calm, let the guys do their job. That They do it every day, a lot of times. Bullskin Fire Company as a whole runs over 100 vehicle accidents a year. EMS is probably running way more than that. And, you know, it, this is just, they know exactly what they're doing, so. They'll take her off into the ambulance. They can assess her to see whether or not they're going to go by ground or by air. As you can see, it's a, it's a team effort from the start to the finish. Okay, this time our patient's been extricated. At this time, we're going to do a rapid assessment uh, just to continue our for initial assessment. We're going to go from head to toe, palpating everything that we can possibly palpate, looking for deformities, uh, any bleeding, any tenderness, anything that just does not feel right, does not look right. We're looking at the patient's face just to see if she's moving or pulling pain. Then we're going to come right back up the other side of the body. And we're just going to keep on moving. We're going to start taking vitals at this time. Uh, we're going to put her on heart monitor to make sure everything's going good there. Uh, sometimes in accidents, we're trained to uh, definitely check the heart. We're going to do a 12-lead on her. We're going to do everything we possibly do to check all sides of her heart. Uh, there's times that she would hit the steering wheel. It may throw her into different heart arrhythmias. So we're going to make sure we do everything. We're going to check her blood pressure. Uh, you know, if it's high or low, it tells me whether she's either internally bleeding or if everything's stable. Once we get all that done, we're going to make a determination if we're going to fly this patient to a level one trauma center, which is either in uh, Presby, which is out of Pittsburgh, or we can go to uh, WVU, which is uh, Ruby Hospital in Morgantown. Uh, more than likely, they're going to go to Presby because of the location that we're in. That's going to be our closest flight time, unless it's upon patient's request and we can go elsewhere. This time he's hooking the monitor up to uh, check her heart out. And obviously if everything checks out, everything's fine and the patient's awake and fully with it, we're going to go local, either Highlands or Uniontown or where, wherever we are closest to. It could be Westmoreland or Frick, depending on where we are. Two facilities, Presby and 
West Virginia? Yes. Uh, is does one specialize in anything like if oh, would be say a burn victim or something? Well, if or you were, about the same? right, if you would be a burn victim, we'd probably send you to Mercy because they specialize oh, in burns. Okay. Um, or West Penn, which would be the two local burn centers that specialize in that. Uh, we're talking about Presby or Ruby because they are um, a specialized trauma center. Um, there's different series. There's level ones, level twos, and then nothing. Uh, the nothing is like your basic hospital, like Highlands, Frick, uh, Uniontown. Uh, the level twos are like Forbes and other local regional hospitals, such as that uh, Westmoreland. That they're going to do a little bit more for you, but not like Presby or Ruby. They're going to go all out. They have all the specialists on call, if not on duty already, to be able to do uh, head scans, uh, X-rays, anything imaginable to treat any injuries that you have, whether you have any bones sticking out, any broken bones, any sprained ankles, sprained wrists, whatever. Um, you know, you do a lot of the interventional stuff, like if there's any yes. um, any kind of spinal trauma, head injury, anything with your brain and that, they can actually go in and internally do to uh, fix the problem. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you had mentioned too, do you actually ask the patient if they have a preference if they're going to open? Said about the uh, well, if you are, if you're cautious and with it, I mean, it all is determined on on the injuries and everything that we find. And getting you there probably as right. quickly as possible. Right, as quickly as possible. We have what we what is called a golden hour. We need to have everything, all your interventions done within an hour. That's your best chances of recovery. Oh, okay. Uh, and that golden hour starts when you hit a tree or wreck or whatever the case may be. The clock starts. The clock starts in. Okay. So you got to take that time into consideration. Uh, you know, what kind of road? Are you in your back road where nobody found you for a half hour? Now we're down a half hour. Uh, you know, by the time they go through the process of calling 911, dispatching the ambulance, fire department, police departments, us getting on scene, our golden hour just went down to 15 minutes now. So in a matter of about six or eight minutes, I need to make a decision, and then I need to find a helicopter that's within the other next five minutes to be able to fly out. Um, it all takes into consideration. Then we also have standing protocols. You know, if we're within 45 minutes of a trauma center, we can take you by ground as long as you don't need a level higher of care and you're stable. So uh, there's a lot of variation that go into it. Um, sure, like uh, said, nothing, yeah. there's no such thing as an average or a typical accident. Right. Like if we take an you out of that car and you're unconscious, I mean, that pretty much if you're unconscious, we can't get you to respond and talk to us whatsoever. That's like an automatic. It takes two seconds for us to make a decision. Yep. Really? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then sometimes it takes, like he said, two seconds. Sometimes it takes five minutes. Yep. Uh, but within the first five minutes, we know if we're going to send you local or if you're going to okay. go downtown somewhere. And do you like then you'll be making those arrangements, as you said, like as they're working? Uh, yes. Yeah, so okay. we, we contact uh, our medical director and let them know what we have. And uh, then we're going to put a, put a helicopter in the air um, or we're going to go local. Uh, so normally when he's working with you in a car like he was today, I'd be, you know, talking to him. Communication is a big key between the partnership on the ambulance. Uh, and we're either going to be on the phone with the doctors or we're going to make that decision ourselves, depending on how critical you are. Was that you in the car with me? Yes. Oh, I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it, it, like I said, a lot of variations. There's nothing normal. There's nothing... That's going to be, it's never the same thing. Okay. So. So you guys have to be prepared for anything, anytime. Anything, everything, all all times of the days. Are you done with me? Because you're not, you're not sticking any needles in Oh, yes. You? <laughs> <laughs> no needles today. Okay. Okay, we good, guys? Yep. We're all good. right. You guys are good. Thanks. Well, folks, I hope that you enjoyed the show again. And for those of you that have never seen it, I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, it is one of my favorite episodes. It's a very, very great way to get to see exactly what our first responders do whenever they're out and about helping those folks in need. So folks, again, I hope you enjoyed the show. And remember, keep smiling, keep dreaming, and keep watching.